Hey guys, this is Adam from the Dumbass the Gamer Squad here, bringing you with episode 8 of Beast Quest Beast Review, Series 8, The Pirate King. Um, before I get into this video, shout out to Lucas Scream with the in depth story reviews on this, and um, yeah, that's all I can say. Um, if I miss any any additional information, and you think I did, either read the books yourself, I would recommend it, any of these books really. Or check out Luke Screen's channel, and see what goes on over there. Anyway, we will be getting into this review now. This is the fourth take I'm been doing this, and quite frankly, as you can probably tell, I'm a bit annoyed. Um... Hopefully this goes well. Let's get started with Ballisk the Water Snake. Design is an 8. I like the um, intimidation it has and the um, design on the side of the head with the fins and the claws or talons. I'm going to call it claws because that's what they had. That's what it was called. Abilities is a 7. Agile in the air and in the water. And can split into 2. Uh, one is flying, one is swimming. So that's it there. The fight is an eight. Um, fight is an eight. Sephiroth's in it. Kept the Sampaio and his gang at bay. So that's great. And um, basically, it ended in such a bad way, in my opinion. The flying ballast and the swimming ballast collided with one another, causing them to merge together and go to the bottom of the sea where they died. Sorry. <coughs> but, um,. Oh god, I'm not sure why people like this beast. I'm not sure why people don't like this beast. I like it a lot. But um, from the way I just reviewed it in one or two minutes, it just sounded like I didn't like it. I do like this beast a lot. There's just not much that I remember from this fight. Apart from both ballists collide into not one another and they died. And then Sampoio made the point of saying... Ugh, it doesn't matter that you killed that beast. I got five more beasts and they're all a lot stronger than Ballisk. Which is true, but also makes Tom feel remorse for killing Ballisk. The total is 23 out of 30. It's a great beast, but it's very underrated. I don't know why. Um, next we have Koron, Jaws of Death. Design is an 8 out of 10. Um, it's not every day you see a tiger mixed with a scorpion. Abilities is an 8 out of 10 as well, with the obviously poisonous sting. And the claws and jaws claw cause um, paralysis when um, bitten or swiped. And um, the fight is also an 8. Well, I'll assume it's also agile, but the fight is also an 8. It involved Tagus, but Tagus was actually blinded from Koron's saliva. But. Unlike Tagus and Trillian, he was actually useful in this beast fight. I think it ended with um, Tom chopping Koron's tail off, causing him to bleed out and die. <coughs> Man, what's going on with me today? Uh, the total is 24 out of 30. It's an all-around um, good beast. Great fight, great design. Ability is kind of obvious, but what are you going to do? N now, next we have... My favourite book of the series, Hexen the Body Snatcher. Design is a 9 out of 10. I know what you're going to say, humanoids, but I like the little additions with the fur pelts, the um, ox skull head and the wormy hair. So that's great, that's really good. Um, abilities is an 8, the trident and the net I can as a weapon, and I like the worms coming from the, actually go, come off the hair. And go under his victim's skin to make them dissolve and join the pelt. So that's good, kind of gross, but yeah, all right. The fight is an eight, a bit yeah, more focused on Sampaio. But basically, Tom lost a shield and is tangled in Hexen's net. Tom won the tug of war against Hexen to get the shield back as well as his net. Tom chucks a net over Hector, then I believe stabbed him with his um, trident, causing all the animals to come out, or and people that were trapped in him, causing Hector to dissolve and die. And um, that's how Hector ended. So that's 
Uh, right. The total is 25 out of 30. It's a great beast, and the fight was using his own weapons against him, which, as you might already know, I like a lot. Next, we have Torno Z Hurricane Dragon. Um, design is an 8. It's best in Inferno design wise. Abilities. Well, more intimidating, actually. Abilities is a 7. Um, obviously, it can fly. Apparently, it's light as a feather with. Um, being, it's nest being on the tree of bean and the tree of bean being on a very small rock if that rock collapses tree beans dead quest finished game over for both of the teams but um torno is apparently licensed feather it can create hurricanes as well and so it's called the hurricane dragon otherwise it would be cool, would have been called the flying dragon which would not be cool at, at all because all dragons can fly apart from Vedra and Krimen when they were in that book in their own book. I don't know if they can fly now, but we'll find out soon eventually when we get to um series fourteen apparently. But um Torno Okay abilities wise fight. I can't remember much from it apart from involved arc so and Torno fell off the cliff and I believe lost the use of his wings, hence why I didn't really fly up away from it, but no, that's one beast down. That's another beast down, so two more to go. The total is 22 out of 30. It's a cool abilities, cool design. The fight was okay. I can't remember much from it. Uh, if you really want to know more about the fight, either read the book yourself or check out Lucas Green's channel. His, he, he has more in-depth fights. But he will also say the point of Torno being able to nest on the tree of bean. With, that's on a tiny little rock. So, um, yeah. Uh, if you're wondering why the tree being so important, Tom's on the quest to protect it from Sampeo, who's trying to get to it so he could go to other kingdoms with his crew and ransack the whole kingdom and go on to the next one and ever. Basically, to be filthy rich. Now we're moving on to Kronos, the Cord Menace. In my opinion, from what we got from Sampeo in this one. I would say it is his it is his favorite, but I don't know. Um, Kronos got a is a design eight out of ten. Uh, yes, I know it's a giant vulture, but its intimidation makes it go from a six or seven to an eight with the um, sharp talons, the gummy, um, the gummy saliva dripping from its mouth, as well as the um, red eyes there. <coughs> Jesus Christ. Um, the abilities is a 9. It can fly, obviously. Apparently, um, can withstand harshest of temperatures. Sharp hands, obviously. Sharp beak. And the best one, uh, can shoot lasers from his eyes. The fights involved Nanook. Nanook didn't do much, so they just protect the tree of being. So, um, stay over there, Nanook, as we take care of this massive vulture. Do what Cypheron did, apart from, instead of keeping the pirates at bay, protect the tree beam um fighters are seven like i said um i can't remember much about this fight apart from how it ended where Kronos basically killed himself by shooting lasers at the tom and alina but they died out of the way so it hit the um ground beneath them which was ice and Kronos fell into the ice and even though maybe can withstand cold weather can't withstand cold water so it just basically drowned under there Design, oh, what design? No, total is 24 out of 30. It's a clever way of beating Kronos by making him kill himself, basically, but not the first way. And um, now we're going on to the next last piece of Series 8. And in my opinion, for once, actually, no, for the third time now, not my favourite of this series. Bloodbore the Buried Doom. Design is a 7. Um, overall wise, but also this wise, it is a hideous design. I like the little addition in the background with the warts, along with the armour plating that it has in the book. Abilities, obviously really powerful, the most powerful beast I have, you know. Being, um, the power being 350. Um, it's also very clever, like most pigs are apparently. And I'm not really happy about that because I don't like pigs at all. Um... <laughs> If you are a really close friend of mine, you'll know why. 
Um, the fight is an eight. It was very rushed, but basically Alina is responsible for the plan behind beating this beast by um having the armor slip off and basically have Blood Roar just get hit once and it dies. So very weak. Um, I'm just rearranging the order now. You guys might disagree with me, but this is my opinion. <laughs> total is uh, yeah, total for Blood Roar is twenty three out of thirty. It's a Okay, finale beast. Okay, final beast. In all categories, amazing finale with not including the beast. But in fact, Harry and Sampe are about to stab Taladon. But since um, Tom saw it in a vision with the eye of Kronos, he threw Blood Bull's bone star at his hand. Obviously, he hurt him. But um, it saved Taladon's life. <clears throat> now we're going to go on to the totals. Design is a 49 out of 60. Uh, I believe the highest score so far. I love these designs. Abilities 47 out of 60. Also, I love these abilities. Highest score so far. Fights 46 out of 60. You never guess what that is. I believe tied with the highest. Yep, tied with the highest. Yep, tied with the highest of series 6. <laughs> oh, I'm loving this. I'm loving it. Da, 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 da. The total, the overall total, the grand total is 141 out of 180. Amazing series, the best score yet. Going to be tough to going to be a tough one to beat. And I'm only saying that because from where I'm at now, which is um near the end of series nine, I don't think it's gonna beat it because I only have two more beasts to go and unfortunately Earth uh, Samana's kind of pulled down that total score a lot. Cause um the other books at the moment seem to have um all around even scores with around the same numbers was minus and Ursus way down there now we're going to go on to the rankings before I run out of time again and this will be my um, seventh take after this one if um, it runs out but you won't know because well I won't be uploaded it but now we're going to get on to the totals Next, last place is Torn of the Hurricane Dragon it made no sense with the um, tree of being being able to balance on it and um, it's just a copy and paste of Ferno, apart from the abilities, which I believe came from Hawkeye. Um, next, we have Blood Ball, the Berry Doom, the lowest any finale would go. And even though it's clever, I originally liked it, but it just is useless in the fight. It was rushed. And even though it's more focused around Sampaio, I would have liked to see more of this beast. Maybe Sampo riding it or saying it's my most powerful beast, even though it's not Kronos, it's the most powerful beast. So Ah oh god, this is a bad this these are bad books. Next we go on to the okay books being Ballisk. You're probably going like why is Ballisk so high in this list? It should be at the bottom or the second to bottom. I don't care, that's my opinion. I like Ballisk a lot. I like these water beasts. But um, the thing that pulled it down was the fact that it was the weakest and Sampeo made the point of it being the weakest. And also, it didn't really do anything to affect the story apart from just be a guard for the ship. Sure, have your weakest beast be the guard for your ship. That would go well. It did not. Next is another okay one being Koron, Joys of Death. I nearly said Joys of Death. Um... There's not really much going for this one apart from the unique design, the paralysis and causing jaws, and obviously the poisonous sting. The fight was okay with take with the beasts helping them being blind. That's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I didn't really like the story overall. It, it had a new horse called Blizzard being involved, so that's good. But apart from that, I just had Sampeo trying to take control of a few people. And, well, it took control of pretty much a whole town or village. And Storm. So that's alright. But they had Blizzard, so. Now we have Kronos, the Clawed Menace, as one of the great books. Um, Basically, it was making it go up here. So I like these air battles. Apart from this wasn't an air battle. But I like its um, ability with the eyes and also it's actually the most intimidating beast um, in my opinion. So far at, the mo at, at least because from where I am now with these um, reading the beasts and from what I've seen of other covers. 
they're more intimidating. Like, um, I ha I don't have this one, but Arax is intimidating. Doom Skull seems intimidating. Uh, Voltrex, yeah, uh, Voltrex seems kind of funny at the moment. Uh, Lustor, Elko, Toron, Karma, Karma, uh, Koba, 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 Koba. Oh my god, I'm useless at this. And apparently Sauron and Plexor from um, series 15 and 18. But as you probably could tell, my favourite book is Hex and the Body Snatcher. Um, of this series. Not my favourite book overall, because there's no way this is beaten Vespic. No one can beat Vespic. And it's really good. But um, <laughs> Hex and is over here, because it is actually the best book of this series. And the more unique design-wise, it's not a giant animal. And it looks like I'm actually going to finish this now. This recording, because this is my seventh attempt. <laughs> I need help. Um, yeah. Hexen's over here, because it is the best book of the series, and the most unique, and I'm a sucker for tridents. I'm a sucker for everything these days, apart from giant monkeys. I hate giant monkeys, and snow monsters. Yep. Um, I said the grand total, so that's good. So, I believe I'm done with the beast of you. Um, but I do need to say this, um, I have been requested to say this since yesterday, that, um, on Lucas Green's channel, we'll be doing a review for the, um, film we recently watched with, uh, that we did a commentary on, which I believe will be coming this Saturday or Sunday with the review of the, the, um, film. So, um, I need to get started on that after I upload this video. But other than that, if you want to watch that review, feel free to go to Luke's Screen's channel. Keep subscribed. Press that notification bell so then you'll know when it's being played. Saturday is Sunday. And we've got a lot more of those um, commentaries and reviews planned. We won't be showing the film for copyright issues. But we all enjoy these films. But the film we're doing after this, I've never seen before. So <laughs> I'm actually looking forward to watching that film. Anyway. That is all for this time. If you liked what you saw, leave a like, leave a comment, don't forget to subscribe, press that little notification bell down in the corner, because then you won't be able to hear what we um, upload. And I will see you at the weekend with the um, commentary of the film, and maybe link the C-Series 4 review, the Dr. Carrad or Carrad saga. It's Carrad, but <laughs> the voice actor called his, his own character Carrad. When Lucas said it's called Karat. So um, that is actually really funny. <laughs> I find that hilarious. Um, the voice acting for Karat, I'm going to say is good, but I don't really like they changed its voice for the slightest thing. Could have the same attitude, but one's like really angry. Then it's like, I did this. <laughs> oh God, I'm looking forward to doing this with you. Um, but anyway, that is series eight. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.